and welcome to In-House Connects Humans of Legal Tech, where we meet the founders of the legal tech companies that are powering today's legal departments. I'm thrilled to have on with us today, Daniel Lewis, the U.S. CEO of Legal On Technologies, the AI, AI contract review tool that is helping over 5,000 legal teams negotiate stronger deals 85% faster. I feel like every time I speak, it grows by another thousand legal teams. So hopefully, hopefully that's the case. Daniel, welcome back to In-House Connect. It's great to have you on today. Thanks, Shai. It's great to be here. All right. So let's start at the beginning. And folks, welcome to In-House Connect. As always, you know, we welcome active participation in the chat. Feel free to ask questions. Feel free to network. I'm super excited to learn more about Daniel and learn more about Legal On Technologies. So let's start at the beginning. I've gotten to interview a lot of legal tech founders and legal tech founders in the CLM space. And most of them are not practicing lawyers or are never practiced. They were never lawyers before. But you, Daniel, uh, you bucked the trend. You were, you did go to law school. Did you, I guess, tell me about your background, how you got started. Did you practice law? Did you go right into legal tech? Yeah, so I come from a family of lawyers. Both parents are lawyers and I have two brothers who are both attorneys. I worked for a few years before law school, went to Stanford to get my JD, thinking that I was going to find some role in the clean tech space. That's what I had my eyes set on. And during the course of law school, I got distracted by how bad legal technology felt. It felt very out of date relative to what we had our hands on in the rest of our daily lives. So that just got me interested. I started spending time talking with computer science professors at Stanford, meeting students in the computer science department, talking with my classmates to understand whether I was crazy or whether other folks felt the same way about the technology that we had our hands on. And that led me to eventually start my first company, which was Ravel Law. And I started that after I graduated. And it was a legal research and analytics company where we focused on trying to create a better way to understand what cases mattered and how judges ruled. So that was a venture-backed business that we sold primarily into law firms, helping litigators make better decisions about case strategy, do case law research more quickly, understand things like how likely a judge was to grant a motion to dismiss in their particular case. Built that business over five years or so, and then LexisNexis acquired us in 2017. So I spent the next five years at Lexis leading businesses there the last two and a half years or so, I was leading kind of all secondary content, practical guidance, and all of the treatises with the famous authors that folks are familiar with. So it was a large team of about 300 attorneys managing that work, creating guidance content across a range of different practice areas, managing all of the secondary content and the thousands of authors that we work with. And I was leading that business across the US, the UK, and Canada when I got introduced to Legal One. So just to, you know, pause for a second. So I guess you never practiced, you went straight into legal tech after law school. Did you ever work at a firm or, you know, what, what's like, I'm curious about your legal experience. Yeah. So obviously I went through law school, ended up taking the bar, passed the bar and then, you know, funding from our first, for our first fundraise landed in the bank a couple of days later. <laughs> and so I was otherwise set to go off to work at the law firm Cooley. And I gave a call to the partner. I said, hey, there's, there's good news and there's bad news. The, the bad news is I'm not coming to Cooley because we just raised a round. The good news is I'd love Cooley to do the legal work. So no, I never ended up getting into practice myself. Although, you know, over the years now, I've gotten my hands dirty in a few different ways. Very cool. So you were, I guess you were a summer associate at Cooley. And, right. Okay. All right. Very cool. Wow. So you turned down a big law job to go into legal tech. I didn't, I didn't appreciate that. So, and then how did Ravel get off the ground? Like this, it feels like we live in a world of AI now, large language models. Was that the plan with Ravel? Like, did you just take all of the, I don't know, piece, like, I'm just curious. I want to dive into that a little bit. Like how did that yeah. go? So this was 2012 machine learning and deep learning were still pretty early, but like a transformation was starting to take place. And so the thesis behind Ravel was there was a whole new wave of technology that we could take advantage of that would unlock insights about case law to help people research more quickly, make better data-driven decisions about what mattered. And part of that thesis was we could get our hands on digital case law. We felt like government was finally starting to do a better job of releasing court opinions. They were no longer 
kind of only available in books, right? You can now get them digitally. It turns out that that wasn't taking place quite as quickly as we needed it to as a startup. So we ended up partnering with Harvard Law School to digitize their full case law collection. So we spent seven or $8 million digitizing books at Harvard, 40,000 plus books. That's now since become publicly available. So if you're interested in this, you can go to Harvard Law School's Law Library website and get access on this full, complete, authoritative collection of case law. But we did that digitization project and that material fed into Ravel and powered our research and analytical systems. So we had a, a very sophisticated team of data scientists and PhDs on machine learning. So we were taking advantage and sort of at the leading edge of what data science and ML could do at that time between 2012 and 2017. And we were able to really innovate and push forward this category of legal, legal analytics, which has now become more common. But that was my first exposure to this intersection of law, content, and, and ML. That's super cool. So you know, Lexis approaches you, they want to buy the company, they acquire you. What was your experience like at Lexis? And, you know, how did you connect with Legal On? So very different experiences, right? When we were acquired, we were about 35 people. Lexis is a 10,000 person company globally. So there was a lot for us to learn as we incorporated into Lexis, but it was ultimately like a very good acquisition and a very good partnership because Lexis believed quite deeply in the thesis of Ravel and wanted to bring that approach to analytics right into the core of their offerings. And so today, if you're a Lexus customer, the Ravel product is called Context, and that's their analytical suite that gives you insights into judges and the parties involved in litigation. And there's also visualization tools. There's a Ravel view within Lexus Search where you can see the visual mapping of cases and how they connect. So there's a bunch of different features that our teams incorporated into Lexus over time. For me, I spent the first year or so working on the acquisition integration, making sure that our teams and our products and our processes were all integrated into Lexus. And then they asked me to lead another business called StateNet, which is a legislation and regulatory tracking company that serves in-house teams and government affairs and compliance teams. That business was in a little bit of a stall. It needed some rejuvenation. So I worked with that team, led it for about 18 months, got the business growing again. And then they asked me to lead sort of all of secondary content and practical guidance. So that was my last two and a half years at the company. What was, were you successful selling Ravel into law firms? And what was that like? I sell a little bit myself into law firms. It's not so easy. Yeah. And I'm curious, like what your experience was. No, it's, it's not so easy. So <laughs> we did, we focused at Ravel on selling into large law firms. You know, we've said, look, this is a tool that's really built for elite litigation. This is going to give you a competitive advantage. And, and those are the kinds of cases where people need it. What I found is that there is a small number, you can almost count them on one hand or maybe two hands of firms that move quite quickly as early adopters. Then there's maybe a couple dozen more that are maybe sort of fast followers. But the I'd say the vast majority of the AMLA 200 and the AMLA 500 are, are not particularly quick in adopting new technology. That's just sort of a general mentality. But the second piece is, you know, law firms don't make decisions in the same way that a typical business does. You're selling into a partnership. It can be quite complicated to get all of the different stakeholders aligned. So sales processes into law firms, in our experience, generally took, you know, six to 12 months. Sometimes you could, you could see those things move faster, but it was a relatively slow, difficult, expensive sales process, which does make it hard for startups to succeed when they focus on selling into large law firms, because there's not so many large law firms and, it, and it's time, quite time consuming and you don't learn very quickly as you go through that sales process, just because it takes a long time. So you don't get rapid sort of week by week feedback about how to make things better. It's, it's very, very hard. Was it, must have been easier at Lexus to, you know, sell established products from, you know, established it's night and day. Yeah, it's, it's really night and day. You know, Lexus already has a relationship with almost every law firm in the country, not to mention, you know, countless in-house yeah. teams and small law firms. So it's a very different conversation. Not only do they have the brand and the trust and people have an existing relationship, but they have a contract that can be amended and renewed <laughs> rather than starting from a blank yeah. page, which, you know, for anybody who's bought something, it's a lot easier to sort of buy the next marginal thing rather than start from scratch. So yeah, the Ravel product succeeded very, very well at Lexus. It was quite, it was quite rewarding actually to see 
our reach be able to expand the number of people that we were serving increase so much faster than we could have done it on our on our own even given years and years of time to do it on our own kudos to you and, and the whole team so when did the you know i guess the conversation shift or the you know mindset shift from leaving lexus and and you know joining legal on like how did that come about take us take us through that point of time yeah, so I was I was leading great teams at Lexus. The practical guidance product is a really interesting, very compelling product, super valuable. It was great to like understand the value that authoritative, trusted content written by lawyers could provide to other lawyers. But in that role, I was spending a lot of time with in-house teams who were a core part of our customer base. And one of the things I kept hearing again and again was the pain of contract review. You know, it comes up as one of the top one, two, three pain points in my experience in talking with most every in-house team. They say, I feel like a person standing in the middle of a river and that river is contracts that are coming in every single day. NDAs, service agreements, event contracts. I can never get out of this river, right? It's just like, the more that I do, the more that they come in. And as I looked around at the market, you know, Lexus, we didn't have a solution for this. We didn't have software to help you review contracts faster. And there were no companies out there that had solved this problem. So that had me interested in thinking already. And that's when I got introduced to LegalOn. And LegalOn had started in 2019 in Japan, started by a couple of corporate attorneys who had their own firsthand experience doing contract review. And they had reached the same conclusion. There was like, there has to be a better way to do this. So they had set out to build software to help review contracts faster and to spot issues so that lawyers could do this work more accurately. And they built a pure software solution that had taken off in Japan. They were serving 3,000 or so customers by the time I got introduced to them. And they were looking to expand to the US and to the rest of the world to take what they built in Japan, which felt very scalable to the rest of the world and, and do that. So when I got introduced, I was really kind of blown away and impressed by a couple things. One was that they built this pure software solution that was so clearly helping thousands of customers already do this. They had demonstrated results from those customers who were reporting you know, 40, 50% time savings on the speed at which they could review contracts. And they built this business that was ready to scale. And so I, I was curious, like, can we take what's been built in Japan and really do that in the US? Obviously there's some differences between these countries. There's probably some difference between the legal systems, I imagine. So I did my diligence to try to figure out how transferable that would be. And I, I, I believe that we could definitely do it after looking at, looking at it closely. So I came on and that's, that's why I got excited about it. I definitely believed that this was a pain and a problem we're solving. And the technology has finally sort of reached the point where we can do it successfully. So I'm curious, like who introduced you? And what's the like the meaning behind legal on technologies? Like what's the meaning behind the name? Well, I was introduced by an acquaintance, you know, legal on was in reaching out to folks in the legal tech space in the US as they tried to, to find somebody who could who could lead the business. So yeah, we got introduced through an acquaintance. The name is sort of generally about like moving legal forward, moving legal forward with technology, supporting lawyers with advanced technology so they they can move onwards is kind of how I think about it. Gotcha. Gotcha. Cool. So I guess what, you know, let's talk about the actual technology here. Like, how does it work? Is it, you know, a cloud-based, you know, I guess SaaS solution? How does it work? How does it identify, you know, to take us through the product and then, you know, we'll get into an actual demo. And if it's easier, if you want to like pull it up now, that's totally cool, but kind of happy to talk about it abstractly or or, you know, you can demonstrate. Yeah, I'll give maybe a, like the high level overview and then we can jump into the, the demo. So what we do at LegalOn is we help in-house teams primarily and, and law firms review contracts faster and more accurately. It's a web-based tool, although we also have a Word add-in, so you can use it online, you can use it in Word if you're already working in Word. It's very simple to use. You have a contract, it comes in, you drag and drop it into the tool. Within about four seconds, you have a review. And that review works off the shelf. We've done all of the work beforehand to put together a contract review playbook. And that applies to dozens of different contract types that you can review. So we can help you review an NDA, an MSA, a DPA, an office lease, the list goes on. So you upload that contract in, four seconds later you have a review. 
And our software has used our playbook to look for hundreds of different issues, essentially like issue spotting, right? These are the things that an in-house team would be looking for as they review a contract to protect themselves, right? To strengthen the contract, to make it protective of their business and their interests. When we spot an issue, we'll flag an alert. And that alert will say, hey, it looks like key language is missing from this contract about how to handle a dispute, something like that. And we'll offer a suggestion of add language to make this particular point. We'll give you sample language written by our own team of attorneys to say, this is the right language to use. This is really like the right sort of example, standard language to use to make this point. And we'll also have a couple paragraphs of a practice note that explains why this matters, how to think about the edge cases, how to think about the negotiation of it. So all of that is right there at your fingertips. You, if you like the suggestion and you want to implement it, you can click a button and we'll make the change for you as a red line. So I'll show that when we get into the demo, but that's the core of it. It's this combination of advanced AI that can spot issues very accurately within contracts, combined and tied to this legal content that we've built internally by hiring a team of experienced in-house practitioners who now just focus on creating contract review playbooks with all of this issue spotting, sample language and guidance baked into it. So that's kind of our, our dual track approach to solving this problem, which makes us very unique in this space. Places like Lexus have a lot of content. We've seen some new startups that are just based on AI, but we're the only company that's really bringing these two things together. So bringing like AI redlining and some practical guidance. Exactly. Gotcha. Gotcha. We have a question in the chat. What types of contracts are in your legal on playbook? That's an interesting question. It sounds like it's a pretty broad variety. Yeah, dozens of different contracts. It's really designed to cover the everyday contracts that a business has. So I've mentioned some of them like NDAs and service agreements, DPAs, SaaS terms of use, office leases, real estate construction, BAAs, clinical trial agreements. I'm going to stop there because I, I don't want to list off. We have playbooks built for all of those contracts and the different sides of the agreement, right? The issues that you'd look for are different if you're the buyer than if you're the seller. So our playbooks are designed to support you no matter what side of the agreement you're on. And they'll have different issue spotting and different suggestions for you pending what side of the table you're on. Do you like, let's say I'm a user and I'm a buyer or I'm a seller or, you know, whatever, or wherever side of the aisle I'm on. And let's say I want to be aggressive or not. Like, is there a preferences that I can, you know, set? Like, it sounds like it comes out of the box with your playbook. What if I want to edit the playbook? Yeah, so you can certainly edit. So it's easy for you to add your own language, your own alerts, if you've got certain things that you like to do your own way. And let me take one step back and sort of mention, we typically see sort of three different customer profiles. So some customers say, look, we love what you guys have totally off the shelf. We don't have our own playbooks. We don't even have our own templates, perhaps. Mm -hmm. We want a lot of help. We need your guys' playbooks. That's going to cover all of these core contracts that we handle. Second set of customers says, we love what you guys have off the shelf, but we've also got a bit of a playbook. We've got some language that we like to use. And, that, and for that, it's very easy for them to add it in on top of our existing playbook. They can build some alerts. They can add their own language. So now they have these two things working together. The third set of customers are typically larger, more mature. They might deal with 700 red lines to their sales agreement or 1,000 plus NDAs a year. And for that specific contract, they'll say, we've already got a very detailed playbook, it's sort of fully built out. It's used by several people on our team. Uh, can you guys automate that in addition to what you offer us off the shelf? And so those are fully custom, but we can do that. So we take that playbook, we fully automate it, turn it into a code. So when you're doing a review of that specific agreement type, you're seeing just your alerts, just your content. Super cool. We have another question in the chat. Daniela asks, the AI capabilities are only for contracts written in English. So we have two different language interfaces. As you might imagine, we operate both in the US and, and globally and in Japan. So we've got an English language interface and a Japanese language interface. Under those, we've got English language guidance and content and Japanese language guidance and content for the Japanese market. We can support folks with some other languages and those capabilities are expanding over the next 90 days or so. So we're launching more in product translation ability. So you could bring in contracts in Spanish, in Thai, in Malaysian and translate into, say you're an English speaker, translate into English 
review those contracts in English, make changes that can be translated back into that original contract language like Spanish. That's super cool. Daniela, let us know what language you are looking for, you know, for, for legal on. That's, that's, um, my mind is blown. Spanish. Okay. So it sounds like Spanish support coming soon. Yeah. Uh, that's super cool. Let's, I think this is a good time to, you know, let's see legal on in action. And we have another person who, who's also interested in Spanish. So, so, yeah, so on delay, as they say, support and folks, I, I'm curious have you ever done just like a completely, you know, like obviously we're in a demo environment right now. Have you ever just taken a customer's MSA and redlined it like right off, you know, like, have you ever done that before? Yeah. I mean, as part of our sales process, right, we, we get folks to get their hands dirty, right? So they will have a sample environment. We'll, we'll work with some documents that they provide so they can see it working on agreements that, that they've experienced with maybe even just the day before, right? That's super cool. And before we before we go into the demo, Legal On is offering a 20% discount if you book a full demo. So I want to just put that in the chat right now. So legalontech.com slash C20. You click that, set up a demo, and you will receive a 20% discount if you, I guess, enter into an agreement with them. Another question, is Legal On designed for single users or smaller firms? Like, I guess, how big can, can Legal On get? And I'm also curious, does the business, do business teams use legal on? Yeah. So we serve a really diverse set of customers. As I mentioned, we now serve over 5,500 customers globally. Those are about 80, 85% corporate teams. The other 15, 20% are law firms. So let me just focus on corporate teams for a moment. We serve everybody from single GCs at you know, hundred person companies all the way up to fortune 500s. So it's great for individual users who are looking for a lot of support. It's also great for teams who are looking for consistency, right? If you have four different people reviewing contracts, chances are they might be reviewing in four different ways, negotiating in four different ways, creating complexity for the business. Most legal teams are aware of that. They're looking for solutions that can help them be more consistent, like a playbook, but it's hard for them to build playbooks for all of the different agreements they have keep them live, keep them updated, keep them helpful when you're actually reviewing a contract. So yeah, it, a broad a broad array of sizes that we support and it's very industry agnostic. So we have customers across tech, manufacturing, services, media, banking and finance, construction, kind of whatever industry you're in, we very likely have a good solution for you. Do business people, is it just the legal team who uses? Uh, yeah. Legal on is, is maybe the business, you know, is there a way for like a business person to get an NDA, put it in there, and then maybe it gets routed to legal for final approval or signature, something like that? Yeah, absolutely. There's a couple different ways that we see businesses operate with that. So one is, you know, we'll have legal teams that are composed of lawyers and paraprofessionals, right? Contract managers who might not have a JD, but do a lot of contract review. We certainly serve all of that. Some of those teams go so far as to extend access to frontline teams, right? That could be the marketing team or the sales team. And they say, yeah, once we have a consistent playbook and framework in place through LegalOn, we feel more comfortable with our frontline teams doing either a, a review themselves and escalating to legal if needed, or using the LegalOn interface to upload a contract, tag the legal team, the legal team takes it over from there. So we see a bunch of different preferences about how businesses operate, how much flexibility they give frontline teams, how much they reserve to legal, but we can, we can serve any of those situations. Awesome. And shout out to Nikki. It sounds like Nikki is a contracts manager. So, you know, sounds like a good use case for them. Another question, can you tailor the review by adjusting the governing law? I assume the answer is you just probably tweak the playbook. Yeah, so our off-the-shelf agreements, you you can't tweak to say guidance based on German law, right? But the guidance is based around U.S. jurisdictional law. Pause for a second on the questions. Let's get into to legal on. I promise, Nina, we'll get to your get your question. But Daniel, take this away. So what you're looking at is the dashboard here. This is the first screen that you see once you log into legal on. It shows you the contracts that you've uploaded for review. So those are here on the right. On the left, let me just quickly orient you. So we're going to spend most of our time after I click this review button, I'll walk you through a review, but I also want to highlight some other things. So one feature that's quite important and valuable to folks is search. This is very powerful search across all of the contracts that you put into the tool. So one of the first things that a lot of customers do is 
drag a folder of agreements in because the search that we're going to provide you is much better than what you could get off of your local computer or G Drive or OneDrive. So you could search here. And this is very granular kind of word by word search across all of the contracts in your database makes it easy to find language when you are looking for language for your current negotiation, right? I, I know I, I negotiated this. I had language that I liked. Where was it? This makes it easy to find. You can search across all your contracts. You can also search across your templates that you can upload. So if you have kind of source of truth, the latest and greatest version of your NDA or your sales agreement or your DPA stored in legal on makes it very easy to search and use. We also include over a hundred legal on templates. I'll show you those. You can search across those for language. So my templates are places where you would store your own templates, right? It makes it easy for your team to access the latest and greatest as a source of truth, whether they're a legal team or a frontline user. And then legal on templates are a great place for you to get started if you're looking for a template document for drafting, right? Say you say, oh man, I, I need to enter into a software licensing agreement, but I don't have one of my own. Come to into our templates. We've got you covered. You can see uh, templates that cover different positions, right? As the licensee or the licensor, as well as different jurisdictions like California and New York. If you click into one of these, you'll see it's a template built by our team of attorneys that is easy for you to download into Word, make modifications to your own needs, and you're on your way. And again, these serve as a source of language too, if you're looking for clause by clause search. Okay, so those are a couple things. Search across all of your agreements, templates, yours, and the ones that we provide over a hundred different templates. But let's get into review here. So I'm gonna click review, takes me to a drag and drop screen. I'm just gonna drag in an example master services agreement here. And on the next page, this is sort of your preview screen where you're gonna make a couple quick choices. So you're gonna confirm what contract type you wanna review here. It'll auto detect. And here we're just gonna select it as a master services agreement. Let me open that up again, just so you can quickly see the range of different contracts that we support here. So contracts across data protection, goods, leases, licensing, research, services, and, and more. Then you're gonna choose your position. So are you the customer or the provider? And then you can also select a status, right? So you can track a contracts as they move through an overall process. Maybe you're going through a couple rounds of negotiation. But imagine here you're a customer, a vendor just sent you an MSA, you want to review it, so you click review. This is where in these few seconds our AI is going through that agreement and applying our off-the-shelf playbook. Again, you could buy Legal On today and be using it 10 minutes from now because all of this works off the shelf. You don't need to input anything or train anything. I'm going to jump straight through to our web browser, but this view here shows you the contract on the left and our alerts on the right. You can't edit the contract here, so I just want to I'm going to jump straight into their web browser where you can make edits too. And Daniel, you can drag a PDF or does it have to be a Word, you know, a Word file? Yeah, we support review of both PDF and Word. So here you've got the contract on the left, you've got our alerts on the right. And when you click an alert, it'll jump you to the section of the contract that has triggered it. So this alert says, maybe missing language, specifying provider represents and warrants it shall perform the services without infringing IP of any third party. Okay. You can expand that and our formula here for any alert is we'll have a suggestion of what to do. We'll have sample language, like I mentioned, that is the language written by our team that we think gives you the right point to put into the contract. And we've highlighted here in particular, the piece that's missing from a typical sort of reps and warranties article, the, the sort of specific provision we think is missing. And we've also written guidance that explains why we think this point matters and how to consider it as you as you negotiate. So if all of that looks good to you, you say, I want to implement this, you click AI Revise. And at that point, we're going to take our content, we're going to use advanced AI, and we're going to inject a red line into the agreement. And you can see here, it's a very surgical red line. It's deleting a couple words here. It's adding to a list. It's aligning with the existing defined terms of the contract. So very surgical. The standard that we set for ourselves is not perfection, right? We're, we, can't, we can't guarantee that these are always perfect, but it's very easy for you to inspect as a user. And we really set the bar quite high so that, you know, 90% of the time or more, you'd look at these red lines and say, that's great. I don't need to touch it. Let me move on. So this is, this is how you'd work through it. You'd hit our alerts, 
you'd expand them, you'd consider whether you want to take action. Every business has different risk preferences, different tolerances. You'd click AR Revise, you'd make a change. Obviously, you can continue the edit on your own. So you're not constrained. It's not sort of take it or leave it. You can continue to you know, make edits here, right? You can leave comments just as you would in Word. And all of this works in Word too. I won't show you that today, but we have a great Word add-in. You can do the review. You can make these edits. You can use revised tools right there in Word. And you can also take advantage of our assistant. So Legal on Assistant is a very powerful tool that can answer questions for you. So, you know, can I sign this contract? It's, it's fast, it's flexible, it can answer questions about the contract, it can summarize things, it can draft for you, because I drafted me language about X, Y, or Z, it can even translate, right? So lots of things that you can do with it. And we've basically taken the latest and greatest models and upgraded them through our own prompt engineering and fine tuning on top of it. So you get legal grade protections and all of your data is kept private and secure. It's never used to train foundational AI models. So overarching and sort of encompassing all of this product is SOC 2 type 2 security, as well as kind of very professional grade privacy protections for your data. Cool. We had a couple of questions come through before, so let's tackle them now. How does LegalOn update its playbooks? Like, and I think there's a, there's a question within the question, like, do you use your customer's playbooks at all? Or is it just, you know, you update your own playbooks based on your own attorneys? Yeah, that's what our in-house legal team does. So our legal team focuses on content and keep both creating new content and maintaining and keeping up to date existing content playbooks. So as the, the necessary playbook for a DPA, for example, changes over time, laws may change, market standards may change, our legal team is going back and keeping those playbooks updated. So this is a very daunting task for a lot of in-house teams, right? Making sure that they're staying up to date you can outsource that to us essentially that's what our legal team focuses on we've estimated we've invested over 400,000 man hours in creating all of this legal content so you don't want to do this yourself this is this is best left to the professionals in some way this is what we can focus on very cool can the tool provide alternative language for clawbacks and other one-off terms that you know, you can plug and play. Like, does it maybe it gets familiar with the, the type of sub negotiating provisions that you are comfortable, you know, entering into? And like, maybe it'll suggest that as an edit. Does it have that kind of functionality? So there's, it's easy for you to add your own playbook alert. So if you've got your own language or if varieties of language that you like to use, it's easy to add those as a playbook item. It's also easy to search across your past contracts. The tool today won't like, automatically infer things just based on your behavior, right? It won't infer that you typically negotiate in a particular way. You know, maybe maybe the state of the art gets us there over the next few years, but today the focus is on helping you execute consistently, right? right. That's what we hear from a lot of teams. They want to make sure that they're actually negotiating in the same way, using the same provisions again and again, rather than sort of experiencing potential drift as things change over time and they they sort of continue modifying and making changes, perhaps without realizing it. Gotcha. Okay. So I guess the last question, does LegalOn learn how individual lawyers prefer negotiating particular issues? It sounds like if you modify the playbook, that's how you would, you know, like it's basically will take from the playbook. Yeah, you can take from the playbook and each of our alerts is set to low, medium, or high preferences, right? So you could turn on or off seeing any of these particular alerts. So if you just wanted to look at the high importance alerts, you can filter down to just those. If you want to see the mediums, you can look at those too. And those adjusting, those settings are adjustable by you. So if you look at one of our alerts and we've categorized it as high importance and you say, oh, for us, we don't often negotiate that actually, you can turn that to medium or low. So that's another way for you to adjust the review to just your, your unique preferences. Cool. Is there a like an account manager who would like assist update the, you know, updating the playbook, like how, you know, what is implementation and onboarding look like? Yeah. So it's, it's very easy. There's potentially no implementation depending on where you're coming from in terms of wanting to input your own playbook. So we do have customers who as soon as they're trained and onboarded, they're using it right away, but yeah, each customer gets to work directly with our customer success team. They'll get trained, they'll, we'll help you onboard, we can help you get your playbooks set up, 
and for more extensive customizations. Obviously, there's a lot more services work that we provide to do that too. But for just getting up and running, reviewing an MSA tomorrow, yeah, well, it's very easy. You'd, you'd talk with our customer success team that get you trained. All your accounts would cre be created. It helped you kind of set any settings that you wanted to, and you'd be off and running. So showed you review, showed you our content, showed you the assistant. Once you hit save, it'll take you back to a screen from which you would then download back into Word, send it off to the counterparty using email or whatever communication channel you're using. We work in conjunction with, with or without a CLM. So if you already have a CLM that's helping you manage a workflow, that's great. We layer in and we're gonna go a mile deep on contract review. And if you don't have a CLM, that's fine too. A lot of folks can take advantage of us doing contract review and using our, our storage capabilities. So some folks say CLM is more than I need, it's too complicated, too expensive, and that's fine too. But we're not trying to change your whole workflow, change your whole technology stack designed to help you with the tools you already have. Last thing here, just to show on the assistant is, is a, a great new feature we've launched called Summarize Redlines. So we made some changes to this contract, right? Now you can come into the assistant, summarize those changes, and this is designed to help you draft that email that you're gonna send off to the internal business stakeholder saying, here's what I changed, or here's what matters, or send it off to the counterparty. So this is an example of the kinds of skills that we're upgrading, Gen AI with to make them professional grade for you. The other thing to show you that a lot of customers like is the comparison tool. So here on the left-hand side, I moused over version control. So we started with the original contract, then we made some changes, we saved it. We now have these two versions here. So customers can use this for version control, makes it easy to go back through the iterations of a contract. It's also possible to compare these. So if you send something off and you get a new version back from the counterparty and you want to quickly compare, it makes it easy to do that here. You can see them side by side. We'll mark the changes in color and color code it for you. You can also rip agreements apart article by article. This isn't so necessary here because this is the same agreement. But say you wanted to compare a vendor's MSA with maybe your standard template MSA. What we do in that case is we take those two agreements we rip them apart into the key articles. And we say, what's the, what's the legal concept of this article? And let's line that up against the legal concept in the other contract. So maybe, you know, statements of work appear on the second clause of, of one contract, but the 15th clause of another. That makes it hard to sort of visually inspect them if you just put them side by side. So we deconstruct them, line up those two points so you can see them side by side. So that's the, that's the whole workflow. And then there's, there's lastly here, you could collaborate. So I could say, Shai, I wanna tag you, please come in, look at the privacy section here, or make sure that the business terms around cancellation feel right. So easy to collaborate and, and work within your team. So I'll stop there. That's the, that's the end to end, just to summarize what we looked at, the search features, the templates, the review experience, the guidance in the alerts, assistant, and then this comparison and version control. Super cool. So then you would download, you know, down, I guess there's a download button and you'd send yep. that off to the other party. That's right. And again, if you're working in our Word add-in, that syncs with the web tool. So if you do your review in Word, that version will save to the web and you're already in Word, so you could just save it there, send it off via email. Cool. One thing we haven't talked about, the $64,000 question, what does pricing look like? Like, how does it work? Licenses per person, per, you know, like if you can talk about that. Yeah. So our core models are really built around the number of users that you have. So it's not based on how much data you're storing in the system or how many contracts you're reviewing. It's more built around the size of your team. We have pricing that starts as low as about $5,000 a year for single users. And for teams of 10, it's around 10,000 a year, goes, goes up from there, but the price per user goes down the more users you have. So if you're interested in learning more, definitely reach out. There are some additional features that we can layer in as you get bigger. There's sort of more things that make sense for larger teams, but the core driver is around the number of users you have. Cool. Is there a, like, a trial period that people can use or anything like that? Yeah, when you reach out to our sales team, we can work with you to make sure that you get the experience you want to make sure that you're you're making a good choice. So that can include a variety of different ways to, to test the product. Awesome. All right. And let's talk about the future. What's on the horizon? 
right? What's what are what new you know innovations or or products or you know work streams are are on the horizon for this tool? Yeah, the, there's a lot. I, I won't touch on everything, but there's sort of core things that we're really excited about. One is continue to make all of this ever more accurate. The state of the art technology today is very exciting, but we believe we can even go further. We have customers reporting 85% time savings on some of their contract review. We'd like to further that and make sure it's distributed across even more contract types for them. So we're continuing to expand the number of contracts that we support. We're continuing to add advanced skills to the assistant so that you can do more with that tool, not just ask questions, not just summarize things, but do comparisons, take advantage of your knowledge base in more ways. We're working on things like multiple languages, as we touched on earlier. So yeah, there's a, there's a bunch coming based really on the feedback that we get from our customers, the ideas that they provide us about, hey, wouldn't it be great if you guys did X, Y, or Z? So we find that like the sort of customer-led customer -led product roadmap is giving us all sorts of insights into additional problems that we can help teams solve, which is fun because for a lot of folks, it, it's solving problems that have felt really unsolvable for the last 10 or 20 years. But the technology and the approach, it feels like it's breaking through to make solutions finally possible in a way that they weren't. Just got a question in. From a reverse perspective, how can LegalOn help when I receive the draft agreement from the other, from the counterparty? So I guess maybe you're, you're the vendor, you send it, you send your contract out to the customer, they mark it up, then they put it, then you get it. How do you, you know, do you put it with the red lines into legal on and it can scan what the edits are and, and so on? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So whether it's third party paper that you're receiving or red lines to your own paper, if it's red lines to your own paper, you bring it in, you run the review, say maybe you're the vendor and you're, now the review is going to be looking for, did that other party add red lines that need to be tagged because they're injecting problematic things for you? So those alerts will fire. You can also use the assistant tool and summarize all of those red lines right off the bat. So you get a bird's eye view of the things that have changed. And then you can jump in more tactically to the places that are, are of most concern. So recalling the demo, it sounds like you change that status, right? The counterparty red lines, it can figure out, you know, what your what the original contract was, your edits, if any, and then theirs. And then you right. can summarize that. That's amazing. That's that's really cool. Awesome. I had one more question. How do you work with CLM? Is there like, do you API or are you like kind of two separate things and you just, you know, like they manually bring you, bring the contract in after they edit it with your tool? There are so many CLMs that we don't have automatic API integrations with most of them, but yeah, we can work with customers to figure out what they're using and how to integrate. But for a lot of folks, it's very easy just to go from Word and sync that to okay. their CLM. Okay. All right. I think we are we are out of questions. If you have more questions, folks, put it in the chat. But if not, Daniel, it was wonderful, wonderful to talk to you, to interview you, to see, you know, Legal On in action. It's super cool. A lot of great use features. And I'm excited. I, I might sign up for Legal On myself. I thank you, everybody. We'll wrap up here. I guess any closing remarks, Daniel, before we sign off? No, it's very glad that we were able to do this, Shy. Appreciate people taking time out of their morning or afternoon to learn about what we do and would encourage you to, to reach out to us, take advantage of this 20% discount offer that we're providing the folks who are here on the webinar. And yeah, come learn more about what we do. We've helped thousands of teams with contract review. We'd love to help you. And it's an it's a exciting time in legal technology right now. So I'm really delighted to see all the enthusiasm and energy out there. All right, likewise. Okay. Thank you, Daniel. Thanks everybody for tuning in. We'll sign off here. I hope everybody has a wonderful Thursday and a great weekend.